In our next section, we're going to look at the other MPLS traffic engineering path options that we can define uh, that are going to, going to control the dynamic path selection from the head end of the tunnel to the tail. In terms of things like the, uh, the bandwidth, the, affini the affinity bits, and the uh, other options like the QoS, uh, etc. Now, as we saw from some of our previous examples, there's two main ways that we can do the path selection for the tunnel, either dynamically or explicitly. With explicit, this is typically used with uh, link protection and node protection, where you're using it to exclude an individual node, an individual node or an individual link, and to make sure that it's not included as part of the uh, the path calculation. You can, however, do an explicit calculation that I'm saying uh, I want to go from point A to B to X to Y, etc., and enumerate each hop individually along the path. But you can uh, also combine this with the uh, dynamic path options for, uh, for failback. Now, when we look at this from the CLI point of view, the way that you would do this is by setting the different priority values on the, uh, the path options at the link level. So for example, on router one here, if we look at the show run interface tunnel zero, where we're specifying the tunnel going towards uh, router three, we're saying that right now we only have one potential option it's an explicit path that says we're, uh, the, the name of the path is include underscore XR1. From here, if we look at the show IP explicit path, this says that the only stipulation of the path is that it must include the address 11, 11, 11, 11 somewhere in the path. Now again, you can also do the reverse logic of this is to say I want to exclude a particular node or I want to exclude multiple nodes. Like I want uh, to not go through router 2. I want to again not go through XR2. And then assuming that all of the conditions can be met, once path calculation is successful, then we go into the, uh, the path signaling. But if we look at from the link level, what are some of the other things that we can specify? If we look at the tunnel MPLS traffic engineering, we can say uh, how much bandwidth do we want to reserve for the tunnel? What are the affinity attributes of the link? Or in other words, what is the link uh, color that we want to have? Uh, we could specify what are the, uh, do we want to have uh, fast rerouting uh, required or not, which we'll take a look at a, a little bit later. And then for the uh, path selection, we could specify do we want to use the IGB metric or do we want to use the traffic engineering metric. The difference between them is that the IGB metric affects not only TE, but also your regular IP routing, where the TE metric is going to affect only traffic engineering on its own. So let's say, for example, that we want to configure the path, if we look back at the topology, that we want to go from router 1 in order to get to router 3, that we want to go to router 2, we want to go to XR2, go over this way to XR3, and then down uh, towards router 3. Now, there's a number of different ways to solve this. It just depends on how detailed we want to get into the different attributes. One way to do this would be by changing the metric values that if we say each interface has an IGB metric of 1, okay, based on the OSPF cost values, then again, the metric simply becomes a hop count, where router 1 would prefer to go to router 2 and then over to router 3, or go to XR2 and then down to uh, router 3. However, if we were to modify either the OSPF cost or the traffic engineering metric, then based on raising the cost on other interfaces or lowering it on other interfaces, we can either uh, make the interface less preferred or uh, more preferred. So same as normal IGB routing logic, is, is, except this attribute is applying just to traffic engineering, not applying to regular IGB routing. Okay, so the way that this would look is something like this. On router two, that if we were to look at the show MPLS traffic engineering and look at interface traffic engineering for the topology. And let's look for the uh, identifier 2222. That's our local ID. Okay, this tells us what is the traffic engineering metric and what is the IGB metric on the interface. So by default, these two are directly correlated to each other, that this number is being inherited from the IGB metric. So right now, everything is a metric of 1. If we were to go to interface gig1.23, and say the MPLS traffic engineering administrative weight, 
So they don't call it the metric, they call it the weight, but it's basically the same thing. If we were to set this to a high value, let's say one, two, three, four, five, it's gonna mean that this interface is less preferred, assuming we're making our calculation based on the TE metric as opposed to the IB, uh, IGB metric. Okay, same would be true from XR2 going in this direction. Where we configure that in XR specifically would be under the uh, MPLS traffic engineering mode. So if we show run MPLS, we have under MPLS traffic engineering, the particular link in this case would be 312. And we'll say that we want to set the admin weight. And we're going to set this to a high value. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. Okay, next let's commit the changes. And now on router one, we're going to modify our previous tunnel config to say we want to fall back to a dynamic path selection and that the path selection is going to be based on the TE uh, metric. So from router one, let's go to tunnel zero and we're going to shut it down. And if we show run interface tunnel zero, we'll say don't use that explicit path. Instead, we're going to use a dynamic path. Okay, if we look at on the tunnel interface, the tunnel MPLS traffic engineering path selection metric is based on TE and do show run pipe include TE. We'll see, or let's say show run interface tunnel zero. The default here is that we're basing it on the, uh, the IGB metric. Okay, if we no shut the tunnel and then look at the show MPLS traffic engineering tunnels, Notice here that since the line protocol came up, this means that the, the path calculation and the signaling was correct. If either of those are bad, then the, the line protocol, the interface is not going to come up. Okay, if we now look at the path, it says the path is going from us to router 2, from router 2 to 13, which is this guy, and then from 13 down to 3. Okay, so I did modify the path selection, but I didn't take into account this alternate link as well. So it's not doing exactly what I wanted to do. So it, but the same logic is going to be true here, that if we went to router 2's interface gig 1.213, and we'll say the uh, MPLS traffic engineering administrative weight is a higher value, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. On router 1, if we do a trace, to 3333. Right now we see that we're forwarding through 13, but if we now force router one to re-signal the tunnel based on the new IGB information, we should see that we're gonna change from uh, two to 13 to go from two to 12 to 13 and then to the final destination. But like I mentioned before, when you make a change in the underlying IGB network, it does not immediately cause the traffic engineering tunnels to re-signal. Now you can force it to do that. You can either go to the tunnel and just shut it down and bring it back up, or in exec mode, you can say MPLS traffic engineering, we want to re-optimize the tunnel. And you could say what particular number, like in this case, zero. Okay, the end result of that is if we now do the trace, we should see that we're gonna go to, let's see, now we're going directly to three. Let's see, maybe I did that on the wrong interface. Let's look at on two and let me make sure none of these interfaces are disabled. Okay, so let's see from XR2's point of view, how is it getting to router three? Let's show IP route for three, 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 three. This is going via interface 312, which is this diagonal direction. So let's look at, actually, let me see where I made these changes. I might have made this on the wrong port. Let's show run MPLS. So this is on XR2. And I made the admin weight on 312, which is correct. So let's see, right now this should be, this link is one, two, three, four, uh, one, two, three, four, five. And then on router two, this should be gig 213 and 23 that have the higher weights. And 
And actually, it looks like two is having a problem. That may have something to do with it. But if we take a look from, uh, let's say, router one, let's look at now which, which path is it using. We're still going to router two, so it's still forwarding. Let me try talenting to it. So the admin weight is high on this link, and it is high on which one? One, two, three, four, five. Um, also on router one, what I probably need to do is make sure that the other neighbors are not using my tunnel as the route back to me, which would be the forwarding adjacency. And let me shut it down and bring it back up. So pretty much as a general rule, any time that you make a change to the tunnel, you always want to flap it to bring it back up. Of course, within the lab uh, case. In production, you know, don't do that. <laughs> Um, so let's look at the show MPLS traffic engineering tunnels. And what path did it choose? So it's going from us to two, directly to three. And why is it doing that? Let's look at the show MPLS traffic engineering topology. Okay, what I would want to know is that from us to router two, it says our metric is, uh, TE metric is 10. And then from two, Okay, so let's say this. Let's say show MPLS traffic engineering topology, pipe to include the TEID or the interface address or the TE metric. Okay, because again, this is a lot of output that we're trying to parse through. So what we see here is that the link to router 3 has the larger metric value. Uh, let's see, maybe this is a global change. Is it MPLS traffic engineering path selection metric is the TE metric? I think that may be the case, that it's a, it's a global uh, change, not the interface level change. Let me remove this one from the interface. which is now it's still going that same path. Prior LSP says path option is unknown. Okay, I was gonna uh, hold this until the next section, but let's actually go ahead and jump ahead to, since we're in this situation now, to talk about troubleshooting. Okay, troubleshooting TE, there's gonna be two main steps. We wanna know, was there an error in the path calculation versus the path setup? And the key difference between them is that if the path calculation fails, the router won't even go to signal the tunnel. So when we look at these debugs here, which are to look at the, uh, the path lookup versus the tunnel signaling, the tunnel signaling is only going to get output if the path lookup was actually uh, successful. So this one we want to look at at the head end of the tunnel. The tunnel signaling can be at the head, it can be at the midpoint, or it can be at the tail. Because basically, end to end, everyone is participating in the signaling uh, of the tunnel. Okay, again, the way that we're going to verify these attributes, like I just showed, is looking at the traffic engineering topology. And then this uh, pipe to include is just cutting down the output to show you what are the neighbors that are running TE, and then what are the interfaces that they have it enabled on. Where most common troubleshooting case is going to be that you just forgot to enable either RSVP or you forgot to enable TE on the individual uh, port. Now, when we go to build the tunnel, like within the scope of the lab exam, assuming that they're asking you for multiple constraints, like what's the bandwidth res uh, reservation, what are the affinity bits, et cetera, one of the ways that you could figure out is the problem related to path calculation versus the signaling is to fall back to a dynamic option that is requesting no attributes. So if we're not asking for a specific bandwidth, if we're not asking for a specific affinity, if we're not asking to avoid a specific shared risk link group, we're basically just saying, do you have a shortest path to this particular node in, in the, uh, the TE topology? It's basically the, uh, the lowest common denominator, the simplest uh, combination of, of how we solve the, uh, the path selection. So if you go to fall back to that and you still can't form the tunnel, 
then it normally means that it's some sort of problem where the, uh, the signaling is, is going wrong. So either you forgot to enable TE on one of the boxes or we forgot to enable either RSVP or TE at the, uh, the link level. Okay, so let's look at this on router one and, and figure out why is it choosing to go this particular direction in terms of the path selection. So we're gonna debug MPLS traffic engineering, uh, the uh, path uh, lookup. Okay, then on the tunnel, we're gonna shut this down. And you'll see it's, it's a pretty noisy debug. So a lot of times you'd be better off like copying this to notepad and then kind of parsing through it there. Okay, so it says, first off, we have a path request info. We have no uh, explicit path, so we're trying to do dynamic calculation. We have no constraints in terms of the bandwidth, the minimum bandwidth, or the metric. We also have no constraints in terms of the setup and the whole priority, which we'll talk about in, in a minute. Uh, the affinity bits are zero and the affinity mask is a wild card. This means that we're not looking for a specific link color. This is just another attribute that you can set on, uh, on the physical uh, port level. Okay, it says, I'm coming from me. I'm trying to get to 3333. I'm looking in OSP process 100 in area zero. What we're looking for here, was the path lookup successful? Okay, it says that we're going from one to three and the admin weight is one, two, three, five, five as we're going that direction. So it looks like it thinks that is the minimum uh, metric value. Okay, what I would say to do next is we need to start eliminating individual links from the, uh, from the path selection to see if can we not constrain the traffic to go that direction at all. So let's say for the sake of argument, we're still trying to get the same path selection that I mentioned, which is we want to go in this direction. So what I now want to know is that if this is the only possible way, so if we go to router three and we shut down this link and we shut down this link, now there's no other possible way for XR2 in order to get there. If path uh, signaling fails, then we know that it's some sort of problem related to those uh, underlying interfaces. Okay, so next let's go to router three and we're going to disable those ports. So we're gonna to go to gig1.313, shut it down, and gig1.312 uh, and shut it down. Okay, next time router one, we're gonna leave that debug on, but we're gonna flap the tunnel and see if it can recalculate in that direction. Path lookup begins, says path is successful. Okay, it went from, actually no, it, did, it wasn't successful yet, it's because router two doesn't know that the adjacency was lost yet. So let's go back to router two and show IP OSPF neighbors. Okay, the timer, the dead timer is still, dead timer is still counting down. Let me make sure on router three those were the correct interfaces which was, no, I should have shut down, not 313, I should have shut down 23. Okay, and we'll talk about this in terms of convergence within the scope of fast reroute. You normally would not want traffic engineering to rely on your IGP timers in order to figure out whether the neighbor is up or down. Typically, we're gonna use BFD, bi-directional forwarding detection, so that if the link goes down or the neighbor goes down, you can detect that in a sub-second uh, manner. Technically, you can also use RSVP to do it, but in practical cases, you don't do that. You use BFD to, uh, to figure out if the neighbor is there or not. Okay, so to speed this up, let me shut that link down on router two as, actually, there it goes. Okay, neighbor's down. Okay, so now on router one, let's no-shut the tunnel again and see if we are able to calculate. Okay, it says path lookup success. So we're now going from us to two to 13.2, which is XR3. So let's look at the show MPLS traffic engineering tunnels. And we're going which way? Two to 13 and then to three. So we're going uh, this way. Okay, so let's also shut down that one. Let's go to router two and interface gig1.213 is shut down.
Okay, and actually that's gonna be our error message there. So I shut down the tunnel. Now bring the tunnel back up, and if the end result says that it, uh, path lookup failed, this is the reason why I wasn't, it was not able to dynamically route in that direction. So basically what's gonna happen is that since I did not give it any constraints before, I simply said choose the lowest metric. It didn't ask for the bandwidth, didn't ask for the affinity, didn't ask for anything else. So it basically said I was able to find router three in the shortest path tree if I were to go, let me get back to the diagram, if we were to go this direction or this direction, but I was not able to find them in this direction for, uh, for some reason. Okay, so next let's look at IGB. Let's make sure that there's not a problem like with OSPF between uh, these two guys. So on XR2, let's look at the show IP route. And we're trying to get to 3333. Network is not on the table. Okay, so that's what's gonna be our problem. If we next look at the, let's look at the routing adjacencies. Let's show IP OSPF neighbors. And we don't have an adjacency with uh, 13. So let's look at the show IP OSPF interface or show OSPF interfaces brief. And OSPF is enabled on the link, but notice what it says that the neighbor count is zero. So we don't have an adjacency with them for some reason. Yeah, I'm gonna guess that probably XR3 just doesn't have OSPF enabled on that port. Let's look at the same thing here. Show OSPF interface is brief. And that's what the case is. It's not on 1213. Okay, assuming that the port is actually up, 1213. Let's ping 10.12.13.12, which it is. Okay, so if we show run router OSPF, that's what it is. This was a typo here. That should have said 12, uh, 13 as opposed to 12, uh, 12. But as you can see, especially as the topology starts to get larger, it's very unlikely you're going you're to be able to troubleshoot these problems by looking at show run. Same type of things as we talked about in layer 3 VPN, that you really need to know how do you look at either the show outputs or the debug outputs, other than show run, I should say, uh, to try to narrow the problem down. And then by using this type of process of elimination, it's going to slowly lead you to where the, uh, the ultimate problem uh, is coming from. So I should have said here that the interface is not this one. Instead, the interface is 12.13. Uh, okay, so let's commit the changes. And if we now look at router 1 and show IP route for... 3333, we should relearn this through the new path. Okay, now path lookup is successful. Which is, and I'm gonna, sh let's shut the tunnel down. Okay, and probably also what's happening here on XR3, I probably copied and pasted uh, the wrong value into uh, RSVP and um, uh, traffic engineering as well. So let's just look at the show run which is this here as well. So basically it was just a minor typo under the routing process that the link is running RSVP, but the link is not running traffic engineering. And the end result of that from router one's point of view is path lookup fails. Now again, the other way that I could have told this if, is if we looked at the show MPLS traffic engineering topology, and then I'm gonna pipe to include every single neighbor in every single interface. And again, since it's a lot of output, you just you basically have to you know check one by one, compare this against the diagram, and make sure that none of these interfaces are missing. So I'm piping to include the uh, the traffic engineering identifier, or the interface address. In the case of XR, or in the case of regular iOS, that that doesn't go in quotes. So notice here that XR3, okay, the one all the way at the bottom here, it's this guy. Based on the diagram, this guy is supposed to have one, two, three interfaces that are participating in core routing. But based on the output of the TE topology, I only see two of those links listed. So ideally, as part of the initial verification, I would have checked this and gone through with a fine tooth comb and made sure that every single router has T enabled on all of these uh, particular ports. So again, not that the configuration is complicated per se related to traffic engineering, it's just very repetitive. And one minor mistake like this is going to break the overall uh, topology 
that you're not going to be able to actually bring up uh, the tunnel.